So it's done. Well, 99% complete, actually. Uh, we still have a couple more things to do, such as the door for uh, the um, solar electronics cabinet that you can see there. Um, and some trim pieces up here around the upper door. Um, new curtains. These curtains are the originals and they're pretty ratty. So we're going to work on some nice um, nature or animal themed curtains. Um, name things getting the door complete. We're going to do that tomorrow. Um, and there's a few other little odds and ends. But uh, like down here, there, you probably can't see them. But there's two doors on these two storage areas under the uh, dinette seats. They need to be uh, put back on. Not a lot left to do, probably finishing it tomorrow. Um, so for the most part, it's finished. Uh, I took it for a drive today. Um, well, I took it for a pull today. You don't drive a, uh, a pull behind camper, but yeah, I hitched it up to our sport utility vehicle and took it for a roll down the street and um, it went real well. Got up to 55 miles an hour, which I might might maybe safely could hit 60 but you know why really you know why go that fast it's more of a short range vehicle anyway for the surrounding three or four counties here in the region so there's no need no need to be in a hurry but it you know it pulled perfectly fine couldn't even tell it was back there um seemed balanced let's see what else uh looking around you know it's pretty much a casita <laughs> Uh, just uh, the people who've had it before me made this much thicker, nicer bed, which I have yet to try out. I'm going to try it tonight. This is going to be the first official night for me sleeping in the pod. So that being said, I suppose I should get into sleeping attire. Uh, there we go. Presto changeo, right? So a little more comfortable for sleeping for the first night in the NASA pod. And... Um, it's a little bit muggy in here. According to the thermometer, it's showing 76 degrees in the electronics cabinet. The uh, other room thermometer in, is showing, come on, 71 degrees. That's a little better than 76, but it feels, well, because of 70% relative humidity, it feels a little bit warmer than that. So I guess I'll turn on the fan. Wow, instant cross flow coming from over here. You can see how the curtain's uh, moving a little bit. And uh, that's nice. I can turn it up. Uh, probably don't need it that high. Turn it all the way down to low. Okay, not off. Went maybe setting one. There we go. That'll help us out. Cool it down a little bit. Keep it a good cross flow going. But yeah. I'll show you around a little bit. Looks very different than a few weeks ago, doesn't it? So looking over here to the left, we have the um, information center. And you can see we have on the right, this is the temperature of the solar electronics gear cabinet, which is behind this door. And there's going to be a trim piece up here soon. These blue pieces of tape will be gone. Uh, and also we can show you what's up here. This is the breaker uh, assembly, the breaker and fuse assembly. We have AC side over here and then DC side here. This is a big DC breaker. The main AC breaker is down under the sink. This is a DC converter, uh, 12 volt to 48 volt. That runs the security system. These vents, Jim Hardy put these vents in recently to help keep this cabinet nice and ventilated. We have on the left the information uh, console for the Victron energy systems. And it is showing right now that we are connected to grid power, shore power, as you, if you will. And it's bringing in power, flowing through the inverter, coming down to the batteries, and then from the batteries going out to the DC systems, which are running right now at only 115 or so watts. Not very much going on. We have the, the cooling fan running uh, for the room, the main big fan, the max fan, and the lights. And that's it. Well, and the monitor. 
Okay, over here at the kitchen, we have standard sink for a casita, a uh, duck's top induction cooktop. I'll test that out in the morning, maybe make some tea. Over here is the weather station showing the temperature outside over here and wind zero, temperature inside, humidity inside, and uh, sunset has already happened. <laughs> but yeah, I'll show you how that works tomorrow with the sensor pod on the outside of the vehicle. To the left of the sink and the uh, information console for the um, weather station, we have one of the cooling fans coming from the solar electronics gear cabinet. I can engage the fan if you would like to see that. Let's see if I can make this happen. There we go. I have it set at 85 uh, just because, you know, I don't know, it was kind of an arbitrary number. 85 seemed pretty warm to me, and I just have the fans. There's two of them coming on at 85. I'm going to add a third soon when we add the new door, which is going to go here. Uh, tomorrow we're going to put a door in this position which will seal off this cabinet from, you know, people who may, or cats or animals or whatever who might want to get in there and wreak havoc with uh, very dangerous and expensive wiring and batteries and such. So, um, yeah. Anyway, we'll be putting the door on tomorrow and I'm probably going to add a fan right in this location. Have one more fan. Might as well use it, right? But there are more than two batteries. If you come down here and open the bottom door, there's two more batteries. So we have four big uh, lithium ion batteries from Victron Energy. 12 volt system, by the way. 12 volt system um, that will should be able to power everything for many days when in full sun, but without sun, we'll see. We haven't, we haven't been able to test out the system yet, and we'll be doing that very soon. We're going camping in about a week, and we'll be able to test out all systems, including the fan. This is uh, the roof fan, which is a max fan. Normally, it would be on the roof, but because of the huge array, the huge solar array, 1,780 watt array, we had to put it in the wall, and it makes for a nice kitchen window during the day, actually. It's pretty neat. Okay, then coming over to the right, we have a charging station for USB. Of course, that's also 12 volt, but uh, we're using it as USB. Whoa, come here, GoPro batteries. Don't go falling down in there. And then to the right of that is a night light. Sun, <laughs> cool, huh? Um, and 120 volt outlet with two USB plugs. And then up here is the security system monitor showing all five cameras running at the moment. They record 24 seven, they're connected to Wi-Fi, and uh, any, motion detect, any motion is detected, it will alert me through an app on my phone. And it, it connects to Wi-Fi using that handy dandy little device, which I added all of those little blue heat sinks because the all of the reviews on Amazon stated that it gets really hot. It doesn't get hot now. Those heat sinks work very well. And the security system is housed in this cabinet. I do need to do a little bit of rearranging up here. It's kind of a real mess. There's all kinds of wiring everywhere. I need to do a little bit better with wire management. I don't like this very much. Also, I need to have a little more space for storage, so I will be working on that later, but it's not imperative at the moment. There's one of the cameras. Hello. <laughs> I can see myself over there on the monitor and right there on the camera. Oh, wait, I'm in two places at once. Anyway, uh, and then here's the bed. So nice, thick foam with memory foam on top we're going to or my wife she is good at sewing and embroidery and knitting and crochet and all of those mystical things she's going to cover these seats in something a little more uh, appropriate such as maybe an animal theme of some kind down below we have the two stations for 
um, these will uh, these two stations will run power to the um, animal habitats which right now the pod is set up for human animals but when we use it for festivals uh, we'll need to especially when it's cooler we need to keep the animals warm so these two locations there will be stacks of interlocking um, toolboxes i mentioned in my earlier video which i will show you in a later video when everything is fully complete and on the road and functioning and these toolboxes will plug into these outlets see how when you turn one of these on it sends power to a cable that comes out of the hatch here and then that cable will then be plugged into one of the heating pads built into the um, the animal habitat boxes and there will be uh, as many as 10 in total um, there'll be well, actually 12 there'll be five on this seat we'll, we'll remove the cushions of course five stacked here five stacked there plugged into both of those uh, systems there there's also USB and 12 volt in case we need them for charging things and such. And under this seat is the, the uh, other water tank that I installed to give us extra capacity for water. Okay, bathroom, yes. Dark in there, let me turn on the light. Uh, so. Here's the bathroom, it's very small. It's like a head on a boat. And uh, on the floor, we had the original fish, but it's kind of dirty because I haven't cleaned it yet. I've been working. So I put in this little bamboo, um, I don't know what you call it, a little bamboo thing to stand on. Pretty cool. And uh, I'm gonna give it a test tomorrow morning. This is a vent tube for the water system. Today, when I took the pod on a on the drive down the road, um, I kept hearing odd gurgling sounds when I had the pod at an angle. And I looked in the bathroom and water was coming out of here because, again, it is a vent tube. So any extra pressure, it's going to uh, come over through the vent tube. I will probably eventually run the tube all the way up to the top um, to get away from any spewing of water. It's not a big deal really because it is a shower so any water that comes out will go down the drain into the gray water tank so we'll give that a test in the morning and then this is right now just a storage area i can't really see anything it's dark in there i haven't really made use of that yet so yeah that's it that's uh that's everything that we've done to the pod and um you know, on the inside and a little bit more to do like i said with the curtains and a few other trimmings here and there over in the door and such but uh and of course we got some more electrical work to do down underneath but um that's not going to happen until the parts arrive you know with the supply chain issues it might take a while for some things but those aren't imperative um, right now the pod is plugged in and running on 120 volts from my house which i'm sitting on my carport my house is right there and that is where I'm drawing power at the moment. Um, but of course the solar array works perfectly. I've tested it out and been I've made over 1200 to 1300 watts, I believe at the, at the peak. And it is a 1780 watt array. And I was getting filtered light through the trees. So I can't wait to see how this is gonna do in my friend Mark's yard, which is open to the sky in less than a week. We'll get to test it out to its full capabilities um, but I do know that the solar array makes a lot of power the system all is integrated and working exactly as it should and uh, we've tested the air conditioning as cold as it will go along with the water heater on at the same time and not even a hiccup worked perfectly so that Victron system is amazing it is inc an incredible incredible solar electric system that uh, I can, I, I, I mean, I've only used it a short time, but I'm, I can already say it's, it's worth every penny and um, I highly recommend it. Now you're probably wondering what happened to my pinky. Yeah. So, you know, whenever you're building any major big project, you're going to hurt yourself eventually doing amazing things like this. And uh, yeah, so about two weeks ago, I was working up here behind this panel 
and I had to hold a tiny nut with my pinky and my thumb behind the panel while I turned a screwdriver with the other hand and I had to hold it really tight to keep it from spinning and as I was holding it I heard this loud pop like a twisted a really tight rubber band snapping and I felt the pop in my pinky it was weird and I brought my hand out and the tip the, the you know the last joint of my pinky or first joint depending on how you look at it was bent down like that very strange didn't hurt at all it just didn't work so I taped it up with some painters tape you may see me in some of the video time lapses that I'm about to show you with that blue painters tape wrapped around my finger um, to keep it straight and I finished the job I was working on because it didn't hurt some doctors out there are probably going shame but anyway I had to finish the job right and so I go down to the, the urgent care just down the street and um, they were like oh weird let's x-ray it and they checked it out and they're like you've got a mallet finger injury another person said you've got a swan neck injury N different things coming from different people but then finally they did come to the same conclusion got to wear a brace on it for six to eight weeks for it to heal and if it doesn't heal you might have to get surgery apparently I ruptured a ligament yeah that's a thing didn't know you could do that but anyway so i got to wear this for several weeks and hope that it heals and if it doesn't they'll go in there and stitch stuff back together i suppose and then it'll work but yeah um that's what happened with that yeah so as far as the pod goes i'm gonna sleep in it tonight and see what it's like i'll report on it maybe some point in the middle of the night or maybe i'll sleep all the way till morning i don't know i'll give you a full report so let's see what that's like see you then I have to say this is quite comfortable nice firm mattress with a nice pillow top I believe you call that a pillow top <laughs> but yeah this is really nice I think I'm gonna sleep really well in here Hmm. First, I need to turn off the light, don't I? Hmm. Well, it was a nice night. I slept really well on the Casita's little bed here, and I got a little chilly. Um, got down to 54 last night. And uh, the cross flow, I had to get up and turn off a fan. But um, other than that, I was fine. Um, I like it. I like this little uh, this little pod. is going to be a wonderful um, outreach program um, classroom for Earthshine Nature Programs and for Trails Carolina and Trails Momentum. So I got up this morning and uh, took a shower. I had about an eight-minute shower, which astonished me. I thought it would be like four minutes, but it was about eight minutes. It's a six-gallon water tank. Now, of course, I didn't crank it up to full intensity, full-on heat and steam and all of that, but it was, it was enough. It was great. A lot better than uh, showers I've taken while camping in the past, which weren't showers or, you know, a jump in a creek or something like that, or, you know, wipe down <clears throat> with a wet uh, wash rag, which works, but there's just something about having your own shower and your own bathroom and your own camper. Be it small, it's going to be perfect for uh, when we're doing outreach programs that last several days, such as the LEAF Festival, when the festivals come back full force eventually, which they will. Well, it's time to make some tea. So right here we have the Duck's Top inductive cooktop. I have not used it before. Well, I have in the house to test it out. <clears throat> well, why don't we test it out here? If I can plug it in. It's a brand new outlet. Oh, hey, power on. Okay, let's try this out. So being an inductive cooktop means that you can only um, heat up things in uh, a ferrous, you know, iron-based um, pot. I don't know if this is iron-based, but it's old, so it probably is. Back when they used to make things out of, you know, really heavy, strong material. 
Not that aluminum isn't strong or fiberglass isn't strong, but steel, you know. Um, let's see. Ooh, boil. I heard a clicking sound. Oh, it wasn't even on. <laughs> let's see what it tells me. It can sense whether your pot is... Um, is an appropriate pot for the duck's top or not. Right now, it doesn't seem like anything's happening. Oh. It's working. I, I, good choice in pots, I guess. At least I think it's working. There you go. I'm seeing condensation forming on the top of the stove. So that tells me there's something going on between. Yep. I hear sizzling. Oh, okay. I see why. It's just there's dampness on the pot. It's working. All right, out of curiosity, let's see how much power is being pulled by the system. So according to the uh, Victron Energy uh, dashboard, right now we are uh, pulling 1,055 watts from shore power and our total AC loads are 3,011 watts and the batteries are at 97%, but they are discharging, uh, going through the inverter to power the water heater that's warming up the water after my shower and the duck's top cook pot and of course the fan um, and other DC loads there's only 41 watts going to DC right now I can hear the water starting to boil Wow amazing system I'm gonna drink my smoothie while my my um, tea heats up I have the cold one first. So I think the, the placement of the ventilation fan is going to work perfectly, don't you? Uh, right in front of the area where I cook, it will pull out any fumes, gases, although I don't think I want gases coming off of my food. Um, but yeah, pull them straight outside. Not sure how long this will take. It says eight minutes, if I'm reading this correctly. And it's at the highest setting, power of power 10, which is the highest setting as far as I can tell. Whoa, okay. It's boiling. Wow. That's amazing. That was incredibly fast. And it's warm to the touch. Woo! Look at that. Woo! It's hot to the touch on the top. Wow, okay. Yeah. Don't fall off, lid. There we go. Nice. Root tea. <laughs> what do I mean by root tea? Well, um, I make a healthy tea from, well, it's not just roots. Uh, my wife calls it dirt tea, but it is uh, yellow root, which is a plant that grows down by the creeks around here. It's really good, a good health tonic in the spring, anytime really. And uh, reishi and chaga and um, old man's beard, usnea. Um, and uh, some honey, local honey. Good for you. That's pretty warm, and I don't have a coaster, trivet, um, or anything like that to set it on. So, 
I'll just set it up there. It is after all what that's made for. Don't let that cool off a little bit before I drink it since it was boiling. So I'll have my smoothie. But uh, what was I saying? I don't know. Where did I, where did I go with that? Oh, yeah. My smoothie. <laughs> so you're probably wondering where I got the smoothie. I don't have a refrigerator. Well, that's right. I went inside to get the, the smoothie and the, uh, the tea. But we don't have a fridge in here right now. What I'm going to do about that is um, this table. Uh, when, we're, when we need a fridge, we're going to have the, the fridge sitting on the table. It's going to take up the table space, um, but it's really all you can do in such a small space. Or, of course, put the, the fridge in the other the vehicle that we pull the casita with if, when we're doing those multi-day programs. So, yeah, the, uh, the fridge is a cooler that is also a refrigerator and freezer made by a company called Go Sun. I'll have to show that to you at a later date. But anyway, that's the plan for that. And it'll plug directly into one of those outlets I showed you earlier where the animal habitats will plug in. Okay, so to get the casita to this point, to get the pod to this point, what, what did it take? Well, it took a lot. It took a lot of work by myself and my friends Jim Hardy and Bob Harris who um, the three of us together, and my wife Marion, who worked on it with uh, mainly her inspiration, and now it's her turn to do some interior work. Um, but between the four of us, we have uh, converted the pod from what it was to what it is now in, what let's see, four months. <laughs> took a lot longer than I originally thought. But, um, but yeah, uh, in, in, in the video one, you saw a little bit of the the planning stages and some of the early work but now in this video uh, after I've introduced you to the pod I'm gonna show you what we've done over the last maybe two months um, working to make this thing what it is now and it's all in time-lapse mode uh, so get ready to watch uh, a really fast um, video of the work we have put into this and uh, it's, it's pretty wild how much it takes to convert something from what it was to what it is. Sounds pretty weird, but yeah, you know what I'm saying. Uh, for those of you out there that have converted campers or, or rebuilt campers into whatever you are needing, uh, those of you out there who live in vans, um, you know, it, it takes a lot of work. You know what I'm talking about. So here we go. Take a look at this. This is... Um, the last couple of months of work on the pod, turning it into what you see today.